quick little drive from Port Lincoln and we come to this fabulous view here. We're up on a little lookout vantage point at uh, Coffin, overlooking Coffin Bay. So Coffin Bay down in the left hand corner there. Um, some beautiful little uh, inlets, some nice little sheltered bays and things. Looks great. Don't know too much about it yet. We're going to go down and find our caravan park and uh, make ourselves comfortable. But um, one thing I do know and I was really interested in, Coffin Bay. Why did it get called Coffin Bay? And apparently um, Matthew Finders, when he was discovering, um, charting the coastline of South Australia, came upon this one here and he had a, a good friend on board the boat and his name was Isaac Coffin. The rest is history. Hopefully that's the, <laughs> the one I read. <laughs> But it's also known as a, an amazing spot for some fantastic seafood resources and shellfish. So uh, that's what's on the map for us to go and explore. For a little stroll um, we're at the Coffin Bay Caravan Park there's a nice little walk um, it's called the Oyster Walk <laughs> dream that one up um, so this one there's a couple of legs of it but this one here is going to take us up to the lookout that we're yesterday so uh, good little stroll it was a mention of 12 k's but we'll see how it goes um, keep an eyes peeled for uh, there's a tawny mouth bird I think it's an owl Pretty hard to see in amongst the, the tea tree because it blends into the tea tree so well. So don't like my chances of finding one. Um, but we'll also come across um, there'll be some kangaroos and some emus. Definitely seeing some um, yes, deposits of those animals around the place. Go be careful where you stand. So uh, yeah, a brisk little walk up the hill. Here we go. I didn't see too much in the way of wildlife as we were walking, but uh, dudes spied them. Are they gone? Oh. You spooked them. No, I've been here about stalls again, those people came down. Oh. So, um, but yeah, they're too oh. over I've got video footage, but that's all. I right. missed them. Uh, motorhome is back behind those houses so I've walked up that ridge line to the uh, tower that's up on the top there and then down the hill on the other side and then around the shoreline and we're just making our way across this little bridge here this estuary bridge and go a little bit further around so uh, 
Now I think it's only like five, six Ks at the moment. Probably if you do the entirety of all the oyster walks that are available, we're probably looking at around about the, yeah, the 12 K mark. How you going, hon? All right? Good, good. It's waiting for you, you <sighs> slow coach. My little slow coach, yeah. <laughs> all right. It's a lovely walk though. Good, lovely day too. Yeah, we got sound. Well, here we are. We've just travelled from Port Lincoln to Coffin Bay, as you well know. We've had fun with the emus. You know, oh, the yes, emus. they're gorgeous. Yeah, and we're uh, just across the road at the yeah. park, at the caravan park. It's a nice caravan park. And uh, for a little treat, we've come to um, the Oyster HQ. And it's got to be the nicest oysters you can get here in Coffin Bay oh, and we have been hanging out probably we've tried the Saduna once yeah but they say you've got to try the Coffin Bay oysters and what else you got here sashimi over here we've got a beautiful little uh, sashimi tuna so I've talked about the tuna from uh, Port Lincoln yep and now we're going to eat the rewards give it so, a try cheers cheers Enough because I'm dying to dig in. Kill it. <laughs> Just about to call it quits here at Coffin Bay. We leave tomorrow. But before I leave, I had to show you this. Some of you might be familiar with the, uh, the chippy vending machine and the coat vending machine or the soft drink vending machine. Well, here you have the oyster vending machine. How amazing is that? So, yeah, come on over. You've got a, uh, a list of what you want to purchase, um, a half a dozen oysters, a dozen oysters, two dozen oysters, whether you want them uh, Kilpatrick or whether you want them um, non-opened or you want them opened. And even if you do buy them unopened, you can also buy a, a shucking kit, which includes the glove and the knife. So yeah, you just uh, make your, your selection, comes up with how much. You can then swipe the card and then it'll open up the fridge door of which then gives you the ability to open up the one that you've gone and purchased. Incredible. <laughs> That's the first I've seen. I'm sure you guys have seen it before somewhere and doing other things. But yeah, pretty amazing. Anyway, back to the camp, clean up the last few items and get ready to take off tomorrow for our next part of the exploring. Um, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to click that like and share button um, follow and subscribe. It's really uh, helpful for us to uh, get an idea of numbers and of course put us in the algorithm so YouTube pushes us further up the uh, up the list. So make sure you push that like and subscribe button. Cheers, sweet as I'm feeding. Well, made it to this uh, Cummings Memorial. It's just a little way up the road from um, Coffin Bay. And, uh, oh, gives you goosebumps. It's a uh, staggering spot. Brings back memories of the, uh, obviously the Bunder Cliffs and uh, the Bight. Um, this is a little bit more of a, a somber little spot because apparently uh, in the, uh, the 50s, a bloke, uh, Lost his life out here with a uh, with a boat. I'll give you a little bit more info uh, back at the sign, but uh, she sure is a staggering bit of coastline. Heading up towards Allison, which is up over this way, and we've come from Coffin Bay down that way. So I'll just do a swing around, just to excuse the, the wind. It is a little windy up here, so uh, but it's a fantastic little spot. Absolutely incredible. 
great vantage point from up here. We're up on a little point here, obviously be careful, don't go too close to the damn rocks here. Uh, you. So you can see the coastline that winds its way back down to the south there. And a massive big lake, I think it was called Hamilton Lake or something. Confirm that with you later. It's a grand spot. So Cummins Monument um, on the 29th of June 1959 near Eagle's Nest fishing cutter Ongaree was wrecked whilst retrieving cray pots. So the boat um, became stricken when the cray pot boy line fouled the propeller. Efforts to free the propeller were unsuccessful and the anchor parted. The cutter was brought ashore by the sea where it struck the reef. The crew sent a radio message before having to jump overboard where they struggled against strong undertow currents. So Barry made it ashore, but re-entered the water to help his father, who was in difficulty, and successfully brought him ashore. Barry once again entered the water to help Leo, who was also having difficulties. But Leo disappeared before he could get to him. So uh, yeah, sadly, uh, Leo's body's never been recovered. So uh, Leo Cummins, yeah, a bit of a sad spot. Come into the old, just come into the old Hamilton eating house. I don't know whether it's the original roof, I think it's been re roofed, but man. <laughs> just brick walls used from the stone, I guess, from around the paddocks, and then it's kind of been clay lined and things. But uh, there's a brisk breeze coming from the lake, and it's, it's quite nippy. We definitely want that fireplace roaring away and behind us to uh, get some nice warmth in here. It's very drafty, but yeah, it's not bad. I don't know whether you can see the, the paved floor. It's gorgeous. Bit of a uh, bit of buff on that and a bit of lacquer. Should come up good as new. So yeah, interesting. Yeah, definitely a nice little room in here. With that roaring fire, would be awesome. And then it tucks up out the back into a couple of little tiny rooms. This one's really small out here, and then you got this one back here, so pretty neat. Very nice. We're going to head off to the next little little spot, Good little spot to come and visit. So the facts on the Lake Hamilton Eating House. This building was constructed by Mr. Price Morris sometime between 1851 and 1857. He bought the Sheringa uh, Run. Ah, we'll go and go up. We'll find another bit about Sheringa. In 1951 to 1952, the property carried 29,000 sheep and 250 horses. So the Lake Hamilton Eating House was used as a stopping place for coaches and traveling travelers passing through to more distant areas until the 1880s. So the Caledonian Societies restored the building in uh, 1972 and in 1996. Well done. Looks really, really awesome. A good. Uh, so yeah, it has been um, re-roofed the building and was restored once again. Awesome little eating house. Whew. Might go and put me flanny on. It's getting a bit cool. <laughs> hey, and the other really neat thing around here, you're not going to hear it with the uh, the wind there. But you can see the uh, there's little stone walls. Um, there is obviously thousands of stones up in those paddocks over there, and they utilise those stone walls. They utilise those stone walls to uh, make the paddocks and keep the sheep in. So pretty neat idea. Obviously, a, a bit of an English or a Scottish type idea.
Oh, at the rate we're going, we're never going to make it to Allison. As I'm getting closer, there's so many more little things to see on the way, points of interest. How's this one? <laughs> this just reminds me so much of daily waters. It's amazing, little quirky things around the place. Oh, neat. <laughs> Wussy cat in the window staring at me. I think Jude's gonna like this. She's hungry. So I said, oh, from the reviews, it looks pretty good. So where are we? Sharinga. The Sharinga store. It's pretty cool. You can get your diesel down here. Oh, little cactus. We'll go inside. It's pretty neat. All I can say is, wow. There's some areas here where you're like stepping back in time as far as the store goes. There's modern sort of things. There's uh, some pretty wicked little surf tees and uh, some terrific little, little hats. Now I'm standing outside the van on the sheltered side and I will apologise ahead of time. We're uh, obviously at Allison, or Alliston, Alliston we'll call it. So uh, somewhere, somewhere straight across the bay there's a golf club and we're over there. So um, and now we're on this side which is the, uh, it's an ocean drive and uh, there's these sculptures. I've always wanted to come and visit. All right, uh, where are we now? Oh, you, 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 you. This one's cool, and it looks like I, I can name this one without even having a look at the manual. The instruction booklet. We're in Easter Island, eh? What do you reckon? Here is the Oompa Oompa Men. What a great view. This place just is staggering. To be able to just drive around here in the motorhome at spectacular scenes just behind these Oompa Oompa men. I mean obviously I'm not going to go anywhere near too too close to the edge but that that is staggering. Oh so beautiful. Here it is. The Kiwi, the Kiwi Corner. The famous Jandals. Yep, this is a spot I've been wanting to come. It's beautiful. Just everywhere you go, just the, every corner you go around another corner, it's beautiful. How about those fishermen sitting down there? What a spot. Absolute cracker. Anyway, we're off from Jandal Corner or uh, Thong Corner. Look that one up, especially for your overseas people. What do you call it? It's a flip flop. <laughs> Controversial one, that one, but there they are, the Jandals. On our way. Made it to uh, 
finesse point, I think they call it. Absolutely breathtaking. Look at that. There's a couple of surfies uh, just departing behind me. But um, that ocean is mesmerizingly beautiful. Those waves just pitching in like that. And I can't remember, Walgreaves or something like that is the island out there on the, on the left. Um, a bit of a sea lion um, a sanctuary and um, owls, I think, barn owls or something like that's out there. So it's a predator free type island. But what a, what a sight. Absolutely staggering. It's a beautiful spot. Can't get over it. The clarity of the water down there is just amazing. Right, down here in Waterloo Bay, Alston. Alston over this side here, there's the bay. And we were up over, over in the corner up there, you can just see the headland where the sculptures were. Anyway, what we're looking at down here is the second jetty. They used to uh, bring ships just slightly north of here and they used to row ashore and take all the supplies off and put the supplies on. Um, they built a jetty, I guess it's just down this way, but in 1880, let me just check, 1896 there was a storm and it was demolished. It was only 106 metres long and uh, it was pretty shallow as well. So. Uh, they built this baby. Now this is the oldest screw pylon jetty in South Australia, I believe. So it's got a bit of a historic value to it. Um, it's about 423 meters long. And uh, I think it has a depth of about 3.9 meters at low tide. So steamboats, steam catches could come to here and obviously uh, drop off supplies and pick up things like the wheat and the, uh, the meat and things, the sheep, cattle that is being produced here in Alliston. Right, well, thanks for listening to me on that one. We're going to go up the road a little bit to uh, our next destination, so stay tuned and we'll see where we are. Every day brings new light to help us on our way Always taking my breath whether sun or rain the wind will carry us over That horizon we see Is getting closer I've just been for a run. The small fish and tackle. I can't speak any louder than that. Hello. Yeah. Stuff it. Whoa, we're on a bit of a lean here. Righty ho. Well, I left my selfie stick back in the uh, the van and it's too far for me to go and get. Anyway, we're down here at uh, Alliston Bay. I think they call it Waterloo Bay. Oh no. Let me check it out. Yeah. Okay, we'll go back.
If you haven't done so already, don't forget to click that like and share button, um, follow and subscribe.